Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Shake Sales. I'm your host, Maggie Bloom, the sales evangelist at Mailshake. And today we are speaking with Kevin Dorsey, KD, who's the SVP of sales at Bench.co. I'm super excited to talk with KD. I've been following him for a while and we're lucky enough to have him as a coach at Mailshake. So he helps coach our team. Um, he helps coach leaders on our team. And KD, I'll give you a chance to introduce yourself. So it's the most awkward part of an interview, right? Is when you have to introduce yourself, <laughs> right? You need to talk about yourself. So um, Kevin yeah. Dorsey, everybody calls me KD. Unless I get out of line, then you can call me Kevin. Then I know I went too far. Um, <laughs> I am a, a father. I am a husband. I am a brother. I am a sales leader. Um, I, and I care about my sales people. You know, I've been building sales orgs and sales teams for the last 10, 11 years now, got a couple unicorns under the belt and hopefully building another one here very shortly. So it's been a hell of a ride and, you know, pumped to chat with you. I love the mail shake team. Y'all know this. I ran into Sujin the other day on his bike, right? Like he's working out in the same park I was at. So I love the mail shake team. Isn't that crazy when you actually meet people in real life now and you're like, whoa, this is like, we live near each other somehow. <laughs> So yeah, it's funny, like we don't have to go into today, but yeah, Sujin, like Sujin and I connected years ago, right? In the more so in like the digital marketing space. And then when I moved to Austin, we ran into each other and then now we live like three miles away from each other, right? So just slowly, <laughs> slowly getting closer. Eventually you probably move into my guest room if you didn't yeah. have so many kids, but you know, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. He definitely needs yeah. the space there, but super cool, Katie. And I want to talk with you about the loss of skills in SaaS. And I know this is something that, you know, I've heard you post about on LinkedIn or talk in podcasts of just about like building skills in general. I know that you coach teams right now, like we mentioned, our internal team. And my first question to you sparked from a conversation that I had with our head of outbound sales, Jed, which I know you work closely with him. Um, and it was just the other day, you were all talking about new tools and SaaS. So like, I guess the question is that how are some of these new tools or just tools in general to, or tech stacks almost replacing or automating this SDR role or an SDR team? Ooh, it's interesting because those are two different things in my mind. There's skill development mm -hmm. and then there's tool utilization. Um, so look at these tools, right? And, you know, people can come after me for, for this one, but I feel like I'm one of the few sales leaders like that are, like you know, has been doing this for a minute that's like, yo, like a lot of this can be automated. Right. There's always this like fear of sales leaders and salespeople like, no, nah, like can't automate us. Like, you know, we're, we're salespeople. It's what we do. And it's like, Ooh, like it's it's ha it's already happening. We just don't realize it. Right. See, if, if you really think about it, sales and sales development, for the most part, is just a really long chain of if thens. Mm. If this, then this. That's all it is. That's literally all it is. And when you think about it that way, you start to think about it like a code. You start to think about it like a program, right? So if you're selling this tool, then you target this type of persona. And if you talk to this type of persona, then this is what you say. And if you find this on their LinkedIn, this is what you write. And if they ask this question, it's all if thens and you can actually map a lot of this out if you just take the time to do so right 80% of your objections are the same 5 to 6 right 80% of the concerns of your prospects are the same 5 to 6 80% of the reasons why people buy your product are the same 5 to 6 like you really can right mm -hmm. so then when you start to think about the ifs and the thens this is where the tools start to come in right well if i want to get in touch with someone well then i need accurate contact data well, you've got a lot of tools out there that are doing contact data, right? Well, if I need contact data, then I need to build a list of people to get the contact data for. We've got tools now that are starting to build these lists. I want this type of persona with this type of title at this type of company that uses this type of tool. So now that's being built. Now, once I've found that, then I want to personalize that email. Well, you've got tools yeah. <laughs> that are now starting to personalize that first line of the email. And then I have to make a phone call. Well, you've got tools that are starting to automate that phone call. And if the prospect says this on the phone, you have tools that are now prompting the rep on like, so y'all like, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. Where a lot of people are, I think are behind right now is there's so many different tools 
that doing it, the different pieces, it gets overwhelming. What I've spent a lot of time this past year is like learning about these tools, learning about the different things and how can I connect them? Because if I can connect the lead scrub to the data scrub, to the sales engagement, to the CRM, to that one line personalization, to the live playbook coaching, to the deal management, I'm 90% of the way there. And so you're almost saying like, I guess a skill that people can learn as sales reps or sales managers is like, how are you fitting all these together? Because it can be overwhelming. I mean, I see it. I don't even mm -hmm. work with so many tools, but like, how can these two interact? So would you say that that's something that people should become a bit more well-versed on and who does that lie on? Yeah. Well, there, there's two parts of it, right? There's the if thens building that out is a skill that's going to come from sales leadership and sales people, right? Mm -hmm. If this happens, then what needs to occur? That's going to come from people in the trenches, right? If we hear this, ex this objection, then we need to say this. So a lot of the if thens are going to come from the sales people. So my sales leaders, you actually already have a lot of these if thens. they're just living in your head. Mm -hmm. If like you quite, I could hit up any sales leader right now. It's like, if your people are prospecting, then who should they go after? They would have an answer for that. If someone said it's too expensive, then what should they say? They'd have an answer. So it's first capturing all the if thens. That's a sales leadership skill. Then once you have that, yes, you need to teach that to your people, right? Yes, you need to develop those skills outside of the tools, right? You have all that. Most leaders have all these if thens and scorecards in their head. You got to teach people, right? Develop those skills. But then on the flip side, the tool side, this skill is something, again, it's hard. It's hard to do. And who owns it, truthfully, is whoever understands it the best. And not a lot of sales leaders understand it. But then what that causes is like RevOps to get involved or BizOps to get involved. But they don't understand the sales process. They understand the tools, but they don't understand the sales process. And they don't understand the prospect very well. So that's where a lot of these tools start to get used the wrong way. Is Someone who doesn't understand the sales process puts them together. That someone who doesn't understand the prospect puts them together and then that's the failure, right? So learning how to piece those together is a skill that I think most sales leaders should be looking at over this next two years. So you, Katie, you're telling us that operations and sales need to talk to each other to learn how to use these tools effectively. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> No, no, I love it. Um, and I was just talking with someone in RevOps the other day of like, yeah, how just like marketing and sales, you can hear that all the time. Like they need to communicate with each other. But I'd say the same thing now with all these tools coming up that just like you said, operations and sales also need to be on the same level because from the example you gave, operations doesn't always understand the prospect or what's going on in the day to day with those sales reps there too. And I know another thing I saw you talk about just like more on the side of skills. And I think that's an awesome skill to, to take a look at in the next two years and focus on, but you've talked about talent beating hard work and how we've lost sight of skill development in SAS. So can we just dive into it or pick your brain a little bit more on what you mean by that? For sure. So if you go, you know, I've been, this year I took a lot of time to study, like call it the old great companies. But I think about like the first early tech companies, the IBMs, the, the oracles, right? Like, how did they train their people? Well, when you got hired at IBM, first of all, you had, you know, you went to Scott, you went to college already, right? Managed. Mm -hmm. When you went to IBM, they sent you to a campus to get trained. Like when you got hired, you, you went to the, the, the oracles, basically campus to get trained. You went to IBM and you got trained and you got binders on top of binders educating you on the industry, on the prospect, on the product, all of it, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to become a manager, same idea. You went to manager school. They literally sent you to it to learn and then sent you back, right? Mm -hmm. Now in SAS today, most onboarding programs are two weeks long. There's this rush to get people on the phones. Right? I, lo I love it. Anytime someone beats their chest on this on, on LinkedIn, every time like, <laughs> we get our reps on the phone in three days, yeah. I go, yeah. good for you. That is a horrible idea. Right? Like, and it's this idea, like we just, we don't focus on skill development anymore. We just don't. We focus on product knowledge, 
Then we start to focus on process knowledge, right? Can they use the tools? Then we start to focus on prospect knowledge. Do they even understand the prospect? And lost in there is like how to actually have a great conversation, how to properly handle objections and developing the skill. And this is what's hilarious to me. If I bumped into any sales leader at a bar, right? Bump up. Oh, what do you do? I'm a sales leader. Oh, that's crazy. I'm a sales leader too. That's awesome. Let's talk about skill development real quick. What does it take to get good at something? If I asked any sales leader, what does it take to get good at anything? Sports? music, art, what do you think they tell me, Maggie? What does it take to get good at anything? Practice. Practice, what else? Um, like coaching, having someone there to support you during it. Repetition. Feedback, what else? Repetition, which is kind of like practicing. Um, right. Repetition, but no, it's a good call out because what if I only practice once? Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't work. Uh, but yeah, thinking of from a sports like the sports realm of things is like, and I kind of get what you're saying is like, Hey, let's just throw them on the phones and they'll learn by jumping in the water and learning how to swim. And it's like, Oh wait, no, there's actually tons of practicing that goes into before someone gets on the sports, or, you know, like in a match or a game, things like that. If you ask any sales leader that question, they would tell you that it applies to music. It applies to art. It applies to sports. It applies to singing all of it. Then you flip it and go, how much of that does your sales team get? Most would say, well, none. Mm -hmm. We've lost sight of what it takes to get good at anything, like yeah. anything, let alone sales, anything and plugging that in, right? People throw, you know, there's two ways to look at it. I can double the size of my team or I can make my current team twice as good. Two ways to approach it. And the past, and this is the lesson that we are learning right now in SaaS is everyone through people at growth and not skill at growth. And because their people weren't good at what they do, now we're seeing that reduction in people. They just threw people at it. Whereas if your team was twice as good, you didn't need as many people, which also is a better and more cost efficient way to grow. Skill development trumps it, and I don't know why that we've lost sight of that. That whole hard work beats talent if talent doesn't work hard is actually not true. If you're three times better than me at something, I have to work five times harder than you to beat you. I can't work five times harder than you. Like, I literally can't. Yeah. Skill. Skill development trumps it all, and we've lost sight of that. I love this. And the first thing I thought of is like comparing it to just like people talking about outreach now and how we, well, now we're starting to think backwards about it, but like, Hey, if we just send out more emails, we're going to get a better response rate to these things. And, and it's actually more about like, okay, the quality of the emails, the quality of the targeting, it's not just the number of what you're sending out there. It's the same thing with sales reps and what you're talking about. And I talked about that, that point a while back too, of like, if, again, same idea. I always love to use like the, the bar example or whatever. You can call it a park or on a hike, whatever it is. <laughs> but like there's things if you asked people their opinion on, they would tell you what the right answer is. And then if you ask them if they're doing it, it'll be the opposite, right? If I asked any sales leader out there, which email will get a higher response rate? One with a personalized message or one that's templated? Which will get a higher response rate? 90% of them are going to say, <laughs> well, obviously personalized. And then you go, great. What percentage of the emails your team's sending right now are personalized? Uh, maybe the first one, and even then, not really, right? Everyone focused on scale. They didn't focus on success, right? Everyone, everyone could tell you that. They would tell you, yes, a relevant personalized email will have a higher response rate than none, right? How many personalized emails should you send? Ideally, all of them. But we can't do that at scale, Maggie. We can't do that at scale. So we'd rather scale suck. That's what people are scaling right now. Is they're scaling, but they're scaling suck. And to all my SDRs listening right now, specifically, if all you're doing is sending templated emails, I don't need you. You are already replaceable if all you're doing is sending templated emails. Already replaceable. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's what we're going back with the, the tech stack there and, and how I think that's why it's important to focus on like, okay, what are these skills that people should be learning? How should they apply them there too? And, um, 
Yeah. One of the last things I, I want to ask you here is just, I've, I've heard on podcasts that you've done too, is like one of the biggest things that has helped you in your sales career is studying people. Is that like, you know, from what you've studied and like skills that you've developed, like how can someone do that? Or how did you do that? Well, so, I mean, it, you know, again, right. Sometimes simplicity is everything, right? Like how do you learn anything? Well, you, you go read about it, yeah. right? You go Google it. And again, like, these are just things where people overthink it. Right. And so as we go through this process, we go, okay, right. Well, what did I do to learn about people? Well, one, I just paid attention to people in my life, mm -hmm. starting with myself. How do I read emails? How do I like to be sold? Mm -hmm. What sort of messaging would work with me? What would sound natural if someone was calling me? What type of call would I engage with, right? You start to even just look at like, there are so many of y'all out there right now sending emails and making calls that you know damn well you'd never respond to. Yeah. <laughs> so you start with the person you know the best, which is you. Then you can start elevating from there and paying attention to people around you. Then you can start elevating there and start reading books, right? Like, you know, Methods of Persuasion is one of my favorites that talks about, you know, the psychology of how we make decision, behaviorology, behave. Um, oh, what's another really good one? Like, uh, uh, this is like that, my happy chemicals surrounded by idiots is another really fun one of like how we make decisions. All of that right now, those, those five books, if you read and studied and you did nothing but read those books for the next three years, just on repeat, you would be a better salesperson and be a better leader because they're all about people and how we make decisions on things, right? So the information is out there for us. We just need to go do it. We just need to read it. Absolutely. No. And, and I think, yeah, like you said, with any of these skills and developing the information's out there, I think it's just the, the matter. And sometimes I've never been in sales leadership before, but I have, you know, been under teams with, you know, past companies with, Management that doesn't encourage it where they do just focus on scale. And I think sometimes, obviously, those are just instances as a rep where I had to take it under my own skill of like, okay, I need to develop this skill myself if the manager isn't going to do it. But I think that could be a disconnect. Either, you know, the rep isn't getting that, that coaching or support from their manager or just something that they need to do on their own to do it. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely think those are important skills to have in the coming years too. Is that like, and that's the thing, y'all. Like, and I, I, you know, I get frustrated when I hear, you know, reps complain about not getting enough development from their company. But then when I ask them what they're doing to develop themselves, it's also nothing. Yeah. And I go, well, who, like, where is the flaw really at right now? Like, because the world that I would love to live in is when a company invests in the reps and the reps invest in themselves. Yeah amazing what would happen then right those books that i listed off everyone y'all one libraries still exist by the way there are still <laughs> libraries you could probably go get those books at a library for nothing or you could spend the whopping 60 dollars that you were going to spend on chipotle last week anyway and buy them 60 bucks right books are still the most cost efficient efficient way to learn anything in life and people just don't do it Listen to Katie, libraries are still open. If you have a Kindle too, some of your local libraries will let you rent Kindle books for free on your Kindle if you don't actually want to go in and have a book with you, which I do. <laughs> um, and it's still free that you can go get those books. So Katie, thank you so, so much for talking with us. Excited for, um, you know, just to see you grow and evolve in 2023. And thank you so much for giving us those tips on, you know, tech stacks, how those form together and different skill sets. But before we finish up, where can people find you? Uh, find me on, on LinkedIn, um, Kevin Dorsey. I'm at the follower limit, right? Or the connection limit right now. So you can follow. I probably can't add any more connections um, at the moment. I have a Patreon out there as well, Inside Sales Excellence, where I have a lot of trainings on psychology and influence and sales and all that. So those are the two best places, Patreon and LinkedIn. Awesome. Sweet. Well, thank you so much for your time, Katie. Thank you everyone for listening to another episode of Shake Sales. We'll see you next time.